Is that Adbert's crystal? So it is. It has changed, but I would know it anywhere. However, did you come by it? Then, even in death, his enemies found a way to profit from his sacrifice. Oh, it grieves me to think of his body being used for evil ends. But, thanks to you, his honor is restored, and he may finally find peace. No words can express my gratitude. I will keep this crystal safe to the end of my days. Rest easy, my friend. You have earned it. Pardon? Hmm. <laughs> Very well. Seto, my old friend. You've grown. Oh, oh, Artbert, how oh, I've missed you. I'm sorry I couldn't keep you safe or even console you. Had I only learned to speak sooner, I would have told you how much you meant to me. How much I cared. I knew. I always knew. But I'm happy to hear it nonetheless. Thank you, Seto my partner in crime. I see. His journey continues. I will not yet bid him rest. With you, he may look forward to many more adventures. It has been a while since last I flew. Perhaps I too will go on a little adventure? Ride the winds? Seek the horizon? Yes, I think perhaps I will.
Master Matoya. For too long I have remained silent, but no longer. I could not bear it if you were to leave. Please, stay. I beg of you. Rina, please. I jest, at least in part. What I came to say is this. Thank you. Without your wisdom, your strength, and your kindness to guide us, our people would still be lost. We will never forget you, Master Matoya. Wherever your journeys may take you, you will always be in our hearts. And you in mine. Remember that your people's journey, that our people's journey, is yet ongoing. Your lives will change, and so too will your dreams. Yet come what may, you need not forsake your time-honored traditions, nor less your beliefs. But neither should you be beholden to them. For it was with curiosity and courage that the Knights Blessed first triumphed over adversity. New knowledge and new wisdom are ever worthy of pursuit. Indeed they are. And so, until we return to the Sunless Sea, we shall endeavor to live our lives to the fullest. That is well. But however great your strides, there may yet come a day when the challenges you face cannot be surmounted alone. On such a day... On such a day... You may call on me. Since a means to travel between worlds exists, you can be sure I will find a way to employ it. And there remain so many mysteries here that want for solving. Master Matoya! <laughs> Runeham, really? Everyone, then. We've all said what we needed to. Even as we speak, Becklug undertaketh their final inspection of our spirit vessels. When thine own preparations for the journey are complete, thou art to present thyself in the ocular. Everyone? I want to thank you all. On behalf of the First. You, and Minfilia, and the Exarch. Without each and every one of you guiding us, fighting for us, we wouldn't be standing here now. There wouldn't even be a here. And no words can express our gratitude. We still have a lot to do. Countless trials to overcome. But if it ever seems too much, I'll think of our time together. The happy moments and the sad. I will remember it all, and it will give me the strength to carry on.
without you. Because you made me who I am. Minfilia. Reen. To honor these names and these memories, I will stand with all the people of this land and strive for a better tomorrow. Thancred, I believe the honor of responding should rightfully be thine. I know better than most how much you've grown, and I have every confidence you'll make your people proud. Gods know I'm proud of you. I always will be. You deserve all the happiness in the world, and more. Might we also say a few words? Why, this is just about all of you. To see you off seemed the least we could do. You risked your all for us, fought for a realm not your own. Before you came, we had never known the beauty of the night sky. Or the joy of your company. Though it saddens us deeply, to bid you farewell, it has ever been our way to send off friends with a smile. Wherever your road should lead, we shall pray for your safety. And following your brave example, we shall continue to fight for the Crystarium. With or without us, you've always taken good care of this city. I don't doubt for a moment you'll continue to do so. I. A more resilient people we have never known. As resilient and enduring as the tower that watches over you. To the last, we did not question the Exarch about his past. It is only now, when he can no longer tell us, that we believe we know the answer. We have heard what became of him, and what is about to be attempted. All will be well. Of this we are certain. How could it be otherwise, when every soul in the Crystarium is praying for it with all their heart? And so, when our Lord awakens, I bid you give him a message. Tell him he needn't worry about us. That he need no longer hide who he truly is that he should live his own life to the fullest. And that if he should ever find himself reminiscing on the past with a smile, we shall be smiling with him. Oh. 
Will you tell him this? Thank you. Please look after him for us. I dare say we have all the good wishes we can carry. Let us be on our way. Proceed as instructed, beginning with your memories. just leaves our souls then. We're in your hands, Angelo. It is done! The vessels have received both their memories and their souls! I hereby entrust them to your care. They belong to you now. Just be sure to guard them well, yes? This will work, won't it? Our theories have held thus far. But I make no promises about what is to come. Even the greatest mages in history knew better than to transport a soul across the rift. We, my dear, are in unknown territory. Prepare as we might, we cannot account for all possibilities. And it is in such circumstances that accidents are wont to occur. Yet miracles do happen, so let us pray and will our friends home. I won't stop praying until I know they're safe. All safely stowed away? I do hope so. All that remains then is to step into the mirror. Go now, and safe travels.
did it? Are we? My body feels like a sack of popotos, but otherwise, I have never felt better. <sighs> that said, I doubt any of us will be fit to travel for some while. May we leave the rest to you? The vessel beareth our comrade's blood. With it in thy possession, the way will surely open before thee. What? But you've only just got here! Tataru, might I trouble you to brew us all a pot of your special tea? Ah, and we may require an extra cup. Yours is a long road, my friend, and it stretches onto places beyond imagining. With your every step, these grand adventures shall grow more distant and faint. And there may come a day when you forget the faces and voices of those you have met along the way. On that day, I bid you remember this. That no matter how far your journey may take you, you stand where you stand by virtue of the road you walked to get there. For in times of hardship, when you fear you cannot go on, the joy you have known, the pain you have felt, the prayers you have whispered and answered, they shall ever be your strength and your comfort. This I hope, I believe, here at memory's end. What is it, Alizé? Are you all right? 
Do you still feel under the weather? Physically, I couldn't be better. Thanks to Kryle's ministrations, I'm already looking forward to our next fight. But seriously, don't you have anything to say about that? No less impressive than our garments. You've outdone yourself, Tataru. <laughs> to give credit where it's due, I had help from a certain fiery pixie who visited me in my dreams. They gave me all the information I needed to get the details just right. For your weapons, though, I needed a lot more help. Thankfully, <laughs> our favorite heads of state were happy to place their finest craftsmen at my exclusive disposal. Oh, and speaking of the Alliance leaders, they all express their unreserved elation at your safe return and promise to come and see you in person as soon as they can. They really needn't have gone to such trouble. But we'll be keeping these gifts all the same. Do pass on our gratitude. I realize we haven't taken up new martial arts, nor have I ever been one to set much store by appearances. But I can't help feeling a certain lack of... I don't know... personal development. <laughs> I quite understand. But as you observed, the others had the more pressing need. Rest assured, our turn will come. If I expend any more ether, I swear I will blink out of existence. I need a bite to eat. Tataru, a cup of tea, if you'll be so kind. And something sweet. By Mistress Kryle's exhausted state, may I assume that the ward hath been restored? Indeed. We succeeded in weaving it anew, albeit at a slightly diminished potency than when I had Beck Lug's assistance. It is no cause for concern, though. The tower is not easily reached, never mind breached. And even should some few succeed, their presence won't escape my notice. Excellent. Said duty thus discharged, thou art free to go wheresoever thy fancy taketh thee. Upon which note, hast thou perchance come to a decision? The offer remaineth open. Well, if you're certain that's what you... I, I, I mean if you think I... Right. I accept. Henceforth, I shall count myself a scion of the Seventh Dawn. Grahatia, at your service. 
When I was a boy, many long years ago, I yearned to stand tall as the heroes of Eld. But like a fool seeking to pluck the stars from the heavens, my every attempt to reprise their deeds fell short. I could do with a little rampage myself. What? N now wait, just a... Here we go again. I will join the fray when I finished my tea. Thus did the Avatar of Destruction descend and in her wake leave naught but tears and ash. And then, one day, an all but forgotten dream from my youth stood before me, in the flesh. So it was that a new adventure began. <sighs> the memory of a dying world's end. Night after night. And I thought it but a tired old dream. I say, I knew that securing the palace would provide your radiance with depressingly little sport, but that you should fall asleep out of boredom. Splendid, truly splendid. And my own preparations, you will be pleased to hear, proceed apace. Oh yes! They proceed very well indeed. Frighteningly so. And we owe it not least of all to this singularly useful body I chance to find. With the Populares now all but destroyed, it will be the simplest of tasks to discredit their groundless assertions that I met with a grisly end. And as the very much alive Lord of House Brutus, I have a vast fortune at my disposal. Ah, money! 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 The great motivator! There is simply no better way to move men and expedite plans than with its alluring glint, would you not agree? <gasps> but wait! Were we not acquainted, you and I?
Should our familiarity cause you distress, I beg your forgiveness. <sighs> what did you say your name was? Oh, a dagger through my heart that my deepest desire should forever remain unfulfilled. To live unrecognized, to die forgotten. <laughs> so it goes. Whatever this flesh may have been before, it serves only as a vessel now. And I, faithful Van Daniel, labor only to advance my lord's ambitions. Speaking of which, with the palace in our hands, we may now proceed with the next phase of the plan. But how very odd! Despite all our havoc wreaking, old Elidibus did not deign to appear. Dare I hope that the last of the unsundered is gone? Bound no more by the shackles of mouldering memories of damnable duty, free at last to live for the moment! Your radiance, but give the word, and I shall go forth and prepare for you your hunting ground. That which awaited was a foul beast. Ferocious, ravenous, remorseless. Do as you will. It has been too, too long, my friend, and insufferably dull in your absence. When you return to me, you will share everything. Every blow will be a story unto itself, every triumph, every kill. Rest assured, we shall have a fitting stage for our reunion. Oh yes, to reprise that transcendent moment, I will set this world ablaze, and we shall dance before the pyre. The beast shall kindle the flames of the apocalypse. Into its domain shall the hero set forth for the final chapter in the tale of this star.